So the phrase all of God, the fullness of deity in some of your translations. To me, that means his word. So the word was made flesh, John 1. And then you have an interesting thing I noticed some weeks ago in John 6, the, the very hard teaching. Remember John mm. 6, he's talking about the, he's the bread, the manna that mm. came down from heaven and eat my flesh, drink my blood. And they're all saying to themselves, is this guy a cannibal? <clears throat> what do you mean you came down from out of heaven? The Pharisees are saying. Uh, there in that section, there's an interesting parallel of phrases in John 6, 63 and verse 68. And then that equals the word of life of First John 1. You see how Jesus is embodying that? He, the words of life themselves coming out of his mouth. So that's all of God right there, his word. Yeah. What else of God? His power and wisdom. Paul famously says in 1 Corinthians 1, Christ has become what? The power and wisdom from God. Yeah. Note, by the way, in Matthew eleven nineteen, the Son of Man, is, Jesus is placing himself there as wisdom. As, wisdom. as Proverbs 8, yeah. Proverbs 9. By the way, when you go to Proverbs 8, don't forget the following chapter 9. It's a continuation of that interesting uh, personification yeah. of God's wisdom. And if you believe that's a literal pre-existent person, then you have to explain how it went from a lady to a son. I guess. Yes, yes, so. <laughs> so glory. So we got word, power, wisdom. The glory mm -hmm. of Messiah is the glory of Yahweh. That's what John says in John 12, 41. The prophet Isaiah saw yeah. his glory. Whose glory? He's talking about the Messiah, the yes. Messiah's glory. Yes. So all of these things are in this human person, yes. embodied. Soma there is very important, Colossians 2, 9. It's very physical. That's why John dares to say in 1 John 1, this word of life, that's a what, somehow was seen, somehow was felt, was touched. How the word that's coming into the world as the light, right? It goes from word to light. It's coming into the world. And along the way there, in verse 10, it becomes very physical, the light, the Word. Mm. Jesus is what the Word became. Yeah. And Jesus is what now Spirit is being, yes. at times, yes. identified with, paralleled with, mm. if you want to say. Mm. But again, at the end of the day, all these attributes, as Colossians 2.9 says, right? They're all of God. Oh, yes. They're from mm. someone else. It's all of God mm. in the one man. When Jesus says so that we all can become one, yes, doesn't exactly. mean we lose. I lose no. my personality. I lose Great my spirit. I, we're all one in them. That's right. But it's not like we become a blob. No, no. <laughs> when prophets speak in the Old Testament, mm. sometimes they speak in the first person as yes, God. Moses does this famously, mm. where many translations have Moses suddenly talking as God, as Yahweh himself. He says, I took you oh, out yes, of Egypt. Of Okay, but usually it's the prophetic word in the Old Testament is Yahweh says, mm. the Lord says to you, yeah. and so on. So usually that's right. Yeah. With Jesus, what I would call filter is gone. Because Jesus now can say, like I pointed to in John 6, mm. what I'm saying to you is, is spirit. Mm. It's Holy Spirit. Even before his resurrection. So as a prophet, as the prophet, mm -hmm. above all prophets, mm -hmm. the one from Deuteronomy 18, that prophetic filter of the Old Testament mm -hmm. prophets is gone in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then uh, post-resurrection, Paul can see why. He can say things like, well, he was the exact representation. Mm -hmm. He's the image of God. I think 2 Corinthians 3 or 4, yes. where, where he's talking about he, he's the image of God and he's the, Philippians 2. He was, he was not, he was in the form of God while on earth. Yes, he He's was. talking about mm. the, the Jesus before the resurrection even. Paul can see that he already was the exact representation yes. of God the Father. Yes.